Hello everyone! This is Ninja Girl, Sakura One back with another Yashihime Princess Half Demon review. This past weekend, we got the first part of our two-parter episode, the first in the series. That's a two-parter, I think. So I'm forgetting something, but yeah. And the episode is called Battle on the New Moon Part 1, and it was quite a good episode. I actually really did enjoy it. The story was a bit all over the place just because the girls are separated right now, but you know what? It was still very, very good. So yeah, let's go over everything that went down now, shall we? Since the girls are still kind of scattered around, I guess the best way to go over everything is character by character. So we'll start with best girl Moroha. She is best girl, don't at me. Then we'll move on to Setsuda. And finally, we'll deal with everything that happened with Toa. So yeah, starting with Moroha. She, of course, did lose against the Tanuki demon, the Shogun, when he sent her Crimson Backlash wave back at her, and it forced her, Hachi, and Takachiyo to retreat and go into hiding. So, yeah. It's unfortunate, but yeah. And they're trying to come up with a way for Moroha to get her bow and arrows back because she really needs them to stand a chance against these guys because they need her spiritual abilities. They need her powers. And technically, she could use her spiritual power without her bow and arrows, but the most I think she'd be able to do is like make barriers and talismans like we've seen her do. So she really needs her bow and arrows to really stand a chance against this evil shogun. So, yeah. And... Hachi and Takachiyo also explain to her that they are in a bit of a time crunch on top of that because Takachiyo's little brother is about to be officially made the new lord of the island. So, yeah. And, as Takachiyo explains, that his little brother is far more tame than he is and that would allow the Shogun complete control if his little brother is made the new lord. So... There's the time crunch. They've got to hurry before that ceremony happens that makes him the new lord, officially. So yeah. But Boroha doesn't have any ideas because they tried attacking at night and going during the day would be a bad idea. So she doesn't know what to do. But Hachi explains that actually going this night might be a good idea because it's the night of the new moon. Therefore, that giant eyeball probably would not be able to freeze them in place because the moon's not out. So there's an idea. And Maroha agrees and thinks that's actually not a bad idea as well. So, while they wait for the sun to go down, because they were talking while it was still daytime, they go into a cave and Maroha decides to make a hang glider because she saw somebody else making one on TV in the modern era when she was there with Toa and she actually says it's a fantasy she saw on TV making it. My brain instantly went to Persona 5 but actually it's a reference to Detective Conan I believe so my bad. That's just my Persona fan brain kicking in whenever I hear Phantom Thief. It's so dumb I know but yeah but while she's making it she does ask Hachi how on earth her parents sealed this full moon Tanuki demon away and stopped the Shogun the first time. And he actually agrees to tell her the story. Her and Takachi, of course. So yeah. And we get a flashback. And boy, is it good to see the old gang again. But yeah, it starts off pretty funny. So they were having the Tanuki demons were having a funeral for the previous lord. And they were all in mourning. But then... And I'm guessing this is because somebody tipped Inuyasha and the gang off that something might be up with the Shogun. Maybe it was? Well, no, it couldn't have been Hachi because he would have said if it was. But anyway, yeah. During this funeral, we see Kagome and Sango come in, dressed up in these very nice kimonos. And they start acting flirtatious and being silly. You know. This... It's all part of a ruse, obviously. And like I said, it's gotta be because somebody tipped them off that something is going on with the Shogun. So, yeah. But 
It's ridiculous. And it eventually becomes a party when everyone there starts drinking and gets completely hammered. Aside from Songo and Kagome, of course. So, yeah. It's all part of their plan. And eventually, the Shogun reveals his true colors and says, with the help of the full moon Tanuki demon that he's controlling, he's going to take over and he's going to raise the taxes for everyone living there and anyone who opposes him will end up dead. And he makes an example of two people in the room and literally turns them to skeletons. So, uh-oh. But that prompts Sango Kagome to finally take action and remove the silly kimonos and drop the charade. And Moroku also shows up, and they are ready for battle. And of course, Inuyasha comes, making a grand entrance as always through the roof. <laughs> and it's hilarious, but very much in Inuyasha style, and I loved it. <laughs> it was great. So yeah, and they get ready to attack. But the Shogun tries to play a little bit of a dirty trick. And he makes an illusion of two beautiful women to try and seduce Moroku and Hachi. And this scene was also hilarious. So yeah, Hachi is kind of having slight trouble with it if he feels awkward. And Moroku has his eyes shut and is like, don't fall for it, Hachi. It's just a trick. Don't fall for it. Which <laughs> shows how far Moroku has come. Because, you know, the old him probably would have fallen for this trick in a second. But he does have Songo and he does have Songo there. So, <laughs> yeah. And she comments Oh, it seems like your training has done you some good. <laughs> good monk. <laughs> so, yeah. And Moroku is like, Oh, of course. I have used Songo. I need no one else. Don't you ever worry about that. <laughs> and eventually, the illusion gets dispelled. And Songo again comments You know what? I bet if I wasn't here, you would have fallen for it. <laughs> and Moroku kind of sighs. Kind of like going, eh, probably. <laughs> but, yeah. He still loves Sango, of course. She is his one and only. It's just, yeah. You know how Moroku can be. <laughs> and that was just hilarious. But, eventually, the fight is taken outside. And as much as Moroku does want to help, he knows that Kagome's spiritual power is stronger than his. She is Kikyo's reincarnation. So yeah. And he just says that he's going to leave the rest to her to seal the demon away. And she of course agrees. Jumps on Hachi. And they try and fly over. Gome's ready to use her bow and arrow. She's going to use the arrow of sealing. But that eyeball thing that Maroha has been having to deal with is still there. So... Hachi is forced to retreat before Kagome can even try and shoot her arrow. So, yeah. Kagome does come up with a plan, though. And she has Hachi do a 180 degree turn. And on the turn back, takes aim, fires at the Tanuki Demon, and seals it away. With her arrow of sealing. Which actually looks a lot like Motoha's Heavenly Arrow Barrage. But it's not. So yeah. And this is the first time we've seen her actually use it. We know Kikyo could use it, because that's how she sealed Inuyasha away way back when. But we have never seen Kagome use the arrow of sealing. So that was cool. So, yeah. Oh, also we saw how the Shogun got that mark on his forehead. Inuyasha uses Windscar. So, but yeah. Kagome manages to seal the full moon Tanuki demon away. And she lands on Hachi. Or with Hachi, I should say. And of course, Inuyasha's right there and asks if she's okay. And when she says yes, Inuyasha gets the sweetest smile on his face and it's just adorable. I love that. <laughs> so, yeah. Everything seems good and they decide to take this painting thing, which is how Kagome sealed it. It looks like a painting. They decide to take that and lock it away underground. And, yeah, that seemed to be the end of it. But apparently, one night there was a bad storm, which loosened the painting from the rock wall where they had put it, where Kagome and everyone had put it. And that allowed the Shogun to take back control of it. So yeah. And once he did, he of course went on the move again and even tried to curse Takachio and kill him. So yeah. But thankfully, Moroku was there and was able to help save him. Then, 
that's when we see Takachiya was taken to Jubei. We saw that in season one. So now that's come full circle. You know how that all worked. So yeah. Takachiya was forced to flee because people were out to kill him. Mainly the Shogun. So yeah. Amaroha is quite fascinated by the story. So that was sweet to see. But Hachi, unfortunately, has no idea exactly how the Gome and everyone sealed the full moon Tanuki Demon away underground. He wasn't there to see that part, so... And without that information, Maroa probably can't do the same thing. Take care of this problem. So, Takachiyo and everyone gets the idea that they can write a letter to Sango and try to get the information from her. Or to Moroku and Sango. Excuse me. So, yeah, and they send their bird to go talk to Sango, because obviously, Motoha can't leave. They are on a time crunch. So, yeah, and hopefully, their bird—I forget the name of it—will get back with the yeah, with the information they need to get this done. So, yeah, and then we see Motoha on her hang glider, and it's just adorable. She's having a blast, and yeah. They're making their way, trying to go and beat that horrible Shogun. So yeah. Meanwhile, Setsuna, being it's the night of the new moon, is experiencing it for the first time. And she and the rest of the Demon Slayers, I guess, had stopped at another village along the way. On their way back, because obviously they're trying to get home, but yeah. I'm guessing the snow had picked up, so they decided to stop at another village. And she's up in an attic freezing because, well, she's human now. And her hair is super long. It's actually extremely gorgeous. I love her hair that length. But yeah, it's really long. She's shivering. She's a lot more like Inuyasha would be. She's a lot more emotional. She's a lot sweeter, kinder. And yeah, it's a very nice side to Setsuna. And eventually, one of the people that they're staying with does come up and bring her some kimonos to help her keep warm. And yeah, it's very sweet. And she, of course, accepts. And yeah, it's just adorable. But outside, there were some snow demons. And they found out that Setsuna was there and, of course, want to kill her because, hey, if you kill the daughter of Sashomaru, yeah, you'll definitely be regarded as a powerful demon. So. Yeah. And Ilala apparently was outside and heard it and went and warned Setsuna. So she decides to start writing out a plan to give to Hisui. And when he goes upstairs to check on her, she's just about done writing it. She almost falls asleep again because, remember, all that time she didn't sleep, all those years, it's sort of catching up to her, especially now that she's human. So, yeah, she's trying to finish writing out her, her plan. So that when someone shows up, because they are, they already know, they have a way to combat them and be prepared. And yeah, right as about, right before she's about to fall asleep, she hands her plans to Hisui and says, I leave this to you, you know what to do, and poor thing falls right to sleep. So, yeah. And that's kind of the last we see of her, what I recall. Aside from knowing that the snow demons are coming. So yeah. Now Toa. Toa is of course human now. And she's starting to freak out about Setsuna because she's never experienced the new moon before. Toa has now. And yeah. Now the time is resumed for Setsuna. She knows that she must be experiencing all this now too. So yeah. She's very worried about her. And this makes Riku think that Toa might take the same path as zero as far as you know feeling guilty and sadness for not being there to protect someone they care about and yeah it eventually overwhelming them so yeah because that's what led zero to make that wish on the jewel and make the pearls come into being so yeah he's kind of worried about that but it is what it is but yeah they're just walking through the forest Hoping everything will be okay with Setsuna, at least on Toa's end. And Riku's eyes look like they were healed now, but I don't know if they are for sure. 
Because the way they were drawn, he didn't look blind anymore. But maybe he still is. I don't know. But yeah. Eventually they see these strange looking birds coming around. Which were sent by Zero earlier in the episode. And she is of course with Nan Nana Hoshi. Is that his name? Yeah. Yeah. She had sent them earlier in the episode. So they finally catch up to Toa. And... They slice through them, you know, or Riku does, because Toa can't fight because she's human. So Riku has to get rid of these paper butterfly looking things. But he does eventually see Zero's reflection in one of them when they return to the shape of a normal talisman. So he knows something is severely wrong, and he tries to tell Toa and Rion to run, but they're both eventually trapped. Toa is able to shove Rion out of the way, but eventually, Toa is teleported and taken away, and she is taken right in front of Zero, now sees her in her human form, although she, I think she already knew that there was a new moon thing because she had Toa's pearl, you know, and she mentioned that she was intrigued by what she saw in the silver pearl's memories, because, yeah, the pearls are now all tainted with the girl's memories and stuff they've been through. Which is why she doesn't want to use them. So, yeah. We don't know what exactly is going to happen with Toa next, but she is in grave danger right now. Because, yeah, she's human, with no way to really defend herself now, and Zero has captured her. So, um, not a good situation for poor Toa right now. So, yeah. But that's where the episode ends, with Toa in Zero's clutches. Things do not look good. So yeah. And in the episode preview for the next one, it seems like each of the girls are going to be in quite the situations themselves, not just Toa. So I'm very intrigued to see how it all ends. But yeah, I think that will do it for this review though. It was a very interesting, very fun episode. It was great seeing the old gang again, kicking some butt like the old days. Hopefully we get that even more, only with their children this time. Someday. Especially as far as Moroha, Inuyasha, and Kagome are concerned. So I would love that, but we shall see. We still have the rest of the season to go. I'm not even sure how many episodes this season is going to be. Probably the same amount, I would assume. 26 episodes, I think. 25, 26. I think that's what season 1 was, so... Probably the same. We shall see, though. But I'm hoping for the best, and I hope everything will end well. But yeah. Again, good episode. I'm not going to ramble on any further. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, share it around if you want. If you want to follow me on Twitter or support the channel Patreon, both links will be in the video description below, and I'd be forever grateful if you did. But yeah, until Battle on the New Moon Part 2, I'll see you guys next time.